In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over how to identify and control powdery mildew as we see exhibited in this picture right here in cannabis. All right, let's go over how to identify and control powdery mildew on cannabis. If you're getting it to this stage, probably a little late, so hopefully you can identify earlier than this and implement some of the suggested controls here so you don't get to this level of severity. So how do we go about identifying powdery mildew? Well, it's a white powdery substance that is typically first noticed on the leaves, but can infect the buds as well as sometimes even the stems. Hemp powdery mildew uh, is caused by what looks like now is two potential uh, fun fungi and is identified by its upright chains and barrel shaped spores when you're able to zoom in at high magnification. They can tend to favor one side, either the top or the bottom of the leaf during early establishment, so be sure to scout both. Sometimes I find it much more on the upper surface of the leaves and the undersurface is left untouched. Other times in other plants, sometimes it starts on the underside uh, first. So again, be sure to check both sides of the leaf. Also check shadier locations, typically the interior portions of the plant, those leaves, as this is where it typically is first to show up and may go unnoticed because it's a little bit harder to go through and scout those particular leaves. Now, what is the life cycle? Because it's important to understand the life cycle of um, any sort of disease. In a sense, where can you potentially break that life cycle to reduce the pressure on your plants? And basically what's happening is powdery mildew is these little uh, canidium. These canidophores are breaking apart like little chains. They float in the air. They're going through, they're landing on leaves or bud surfaces, and they're going through germinating, getting their self established, getting themselves to grow again, producing more um, spores that are then being released and kind of spreading. Now, in most situations, powdery mildew does not uh, winter over, produce a sexual phase within the northern regions of the United States, uh, but in indoor grows, that might be possible. So keep that in mind. That's for some outdoor species. The frost, the cold weather might break the cycle, um, but sometimes if you're growing indoors, particularly in greenhouse environments, you may be able to get that perpetual kind of powdery mildew pressure. Also, if you're growing near a greenhouse, that powdery mildew could be living in that greenhouse overwintering, making it an earlier chance to get powdery mildew than you would normally expect. Now that mycelium network that does occur, here it's stained uh, for powdery mildew. One can see the mycelium network of powdery mildew inside the leaf, even if powdery mildew is not visible to the human eye. Uh, DPI is days post inoculation, HPI is the hours past inoculation. So what we're noticing is this DPI, HPI, uh, zero hours post inoculation, two to five hours, one day, three day, we're seeing that it lands on this uh, leaf surface, it then spreads horizontally, and then it'll set down like a little foot into the um, epidermis of the plant, it'll take hold, it'll grab nutrients from the plant, and then it'll start to grow sideways, and it'll start to grow upwards, those portions might see them will break off, and then they'll go through and infect other parts. So it's called powdery because it is a powdery look to it, and it's able to spread very quickly in that regards. We can see here uh, days post inoculation, zero uh, to one to two to three to four to five to six, how quick that mycelium can go through and spread. So be mindful of that. Now the environmental, how does the environment impact uh, powdery mildew? Well, temperature, moderate temperatures are required for infection and disease development. Optimum temperatures uh, for that Conidal production is 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and those are the little um, kind of like spores, you can think about them, that go through and spread the powdery. 86 plus degrees Fahrenheit uh, and greater, infection and spore production are reduced by half. 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, disease development can be delayed by one or two weeks. This just shows how the outdoor environment, in particular, we don't have regulation over temperature, can really impact things. Also moisture, uh, moisture is required for the pathogen to infect and develop. High humidity provides sufficient moisture, so air exchange around plants is advised, especially for indoor and greenhouse environments. For outdoor locations, shady areas in a field will likely have increased powdery mildew pressure. Now when we're looking at hemp particularly, if growing outdoors where there is less control over the environmental conditions, 
This may influence the variety you select. Some varieties are minimally susceptible, some extremely highly to extremely susceptible to powdery mildew. We see just a couple listed here if you're looking at considering any of those varieties, uh, what their usage might be for CBD, for grain, for fiber, and their susceptibility to powdery mildew. Great to see some of these studies because it may influence what variety you choose to go with because it will depend on the pressure you're suffering for powdery mildew. Here's also looking at another study, primary data uh, detached here of leaf assays showed some differences in susceptibility. These studies are continuing and we're screening for additional 37 cultivars and this was a study done in Cornell. 30 high CBD cultivars were screened for resistance to powdery mildew. Disease severity, we can see some much higher on disease severity, some much less on disease severity. So again, some of these names might be worth consideration. Now the management of powdery mildew. So if we get powdery mildew, uh, the goal is to initially reduce the favorable environment. Continual scouting is also important to catch potential problems early as they can spread very quickly. This may influence plant spacing for outdoor locations as well as the pruning method if you're an indoor grower. So if you're wondering exactly how to manage powdery, what products you should be considering, uh, these are some suggested spray products. So in both situations, you need to know your local and current regulations. Just as a starting point for indoor growers, uh, in grow rooms, daily sulfur burning can help reduce the likelihood of seeing powdery mildew. But if you are uh, supplementing with carbon dioxide and have sensors, they likely uh, will void their warranty and will become ineffective if you have sulfur in the air. Also, more contact products that have low residuals are recommended, such as hydrogen dioxide or hydrogen peroxide. 40% milk, 60% water can actually help suppress uh, spreading of powdery mildew. Sulfur, as I mentioned, but it can burn the plants. Neem oil can also burn the plants. Millstop is a potassium bicarb, typically not as effective as the milk and water spray, but does have some effectiveness, but can also burn the plants potentially. For outdoor locations, typically the pressure can be greater, and while the indoor products uh, can be utilized, as mentioned here, systemic products typically are needed. However, I caution you if you're considering using systemic products, particularly in later stages of cannabis development, as you don't want to impact your final product quality. Also, these products have the greatest chance at resistance, so rotations are advised. So no powdery that can be a major problem in cannabis. Hopefully this provides you with some insight identifying and controlling it if you do uh, find it in your particular plants.